like to offer up uh, this time in the beginning of the meeting for any public comment that anyone might have. Do we have any members of the public who would like to make any comments? Okay, seeing none, uh, we will move on um, to consider um, the adoption of the school board's 2011-2012 budget. Do I have a motion? Yes. I move to approve the 2011-2012 school budget in the amount of $21,124,690, which includes $452,524 in federal job bill funds. Do I have a second? Okay. Discussion? Ken, would you like to give us an overview first, and then board members? Have Board members if they have comments. Okay. The uh, budget that the school committee is considering adopting tonight calls for a 2.2% increase in expenditures, uh, which translates into a 1.9% increase in property taxes. For the median price home in Cape Elizabeth, that would mean a taxpayer would be paying <coughs> approximately $85 more in property taxes due to the school budget. I want to make sure that it's just due to the school budget. So I'm not sure what the municipal side is at this point in time. But the major drivers in this budget, increases and decreases, salaries and benefits uh, are causing a $406,000 increase to the budget. Uh, that line is usually much higher than conservative tentative agreement with our teachers association, so that line is a little bit lower than it would be in most years. In addition, we're reducing one and a half positions due to declining enrollments at Conco, so that is another factor in why the salary line is lower this year uh, than it will probably be in future years. Uh, the buildings and facilities, there's some increases there that uh, we have very little control over, things such as heating oil. Um, there's a slight increase in our property insurance it's going up about $7,000, and there's a need to replace the boiler um, at the high school, and our payment on that will increase the building and facilities budget by $32,000. Um, that line would be much higher if we did not receive the uh, assistance from the town council. And we remain appreciative of that. Um, so that allows us to keep the building and facilities um, line to about a hundred thousand dollar increase over what it was last year. Instructional support is up approximately fifty thousand dollars due to an out of district tuition. Um, we're actually we, we have that student this year and caused the increase this year, but we anticipate increase. In athletics is an increase of eighteen thousand dollars. Most of that is due to uh, an increase in the expenses of the trainer. Um, we have been overexpending that line for the past two or three years. We've been trying to get by with a twelve or thirteen thousand dollar yearly expenditure and each year it's been costing us closer to twenty five thousand dollars. So the the number in the budget is a more accurate portrayal of what we actually spend for athletic trainer. The other increases are transportation, uh, and that's due to fuel. It's about a $15,000 increase in the price of fuel that we are projecting. So those are the major increases. Um, <coughs> decreases, uh, contingency fund is back down to where it has been at historical levels, about 70000 we were able to beef that up last year because the state provided some unanticipated revenue near the end of the budget cycle. So that was that was up at like three hundred thousand dollars. But historically, we've only carried about seventy thousand dollars in that line item. And as you've heard me mention before, I think when times get better, that number really needs to be increased, probably two or three times the size at least, um, you know, a $21 million budget to have a $70,000 contingency is asking anyone to be way too precise at this point of the year. I mean, you just had the discussion about, um, you know, the high school boiler, the um, middle school hot water heater, those things, and they'll be different 
great stories next year, but there will be probably <laughs> some other great stories. Um, but in any event, the point is, uh, it's a really skinny contingency gap. That service is down $34,000. The other accounts, and I want to express my appreciation for the members of the district leadership team and the development of this budget, because I asked them to you know, bring in spending levels that were the same as previous years, and they did that. In fact, they reduced most of their lines. Um, so if you put everything else that makes up the school budget, it's down about $8,000. Um, so we think it's a budget that, you know, reflects the current economic climate, uh, and at the same time it maintains, um, you know, what is a pretty top-notch school system. Discussion from board members. Any comments? David? Um, I was still writing. I was kind of hoping somebody else would speak first. Anybody else? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Having this bit, um, my first term, first year as a school board member, um, and not having the most um, talented math ability um, all my life, I found that this budget process was extremely um, easy to follow, navigate, and um, I want to thank everybody for making that process so easy to navigate and follow. So thank you, and congratulations to everybody, because based on this process this year and last year, it seemed to have flowed a lot easier this year, so should I add? <laughs> uh, I'm going off the top of my head anyway. So. Um, I, I think it's important for the, the town to understand how we arrived at this and how much more we did this year than previous years. Uh, and, and some of the key un fundamental factors underlying this. Um, and I was quite reluctant quite frankly, at the outset of this, to support what I think is an extremely low increase in the net to taxes, a 2.2% increase, 1.9% net to taxes, $85 per medium price home, to me, is far below what this town could afford to increase. And I am concerned about the future, given the vast uncertainties, which I'll talk about, but um, we did something that we haven't done in previous years. We were in a three-year projection, and projections is another word for guess, guesses, but I think we were fairly conservative in that. Um, to come at our figure, uh, what this assumes, and our three-year projection assumes, that we are funding this year by, by basically withdrawing from our, quote, savings accounts, money we've managed to squirrel away for the last couple of years in both uh, uh, federal jobs bill money as well as some excellent collection of Medicaid monies, reimbursement monies by our IS department that virtually, as far as I can tell, no other town comes close to doing as well as we do. And we managed to squirrel that away and we're going to be spending that next year and the year after to try and keep uh, the tax increase as small as possible. Um, but everybody has to understand that when you draw down savings and your projections turn out to be too optimistic, it's going to make for a larger increase in the third or fourth or fifth year if you're wrong. I happen to be comfortable, and it took me a while to get there, with the projections we've done and the assumptions we've made, but I think it's important for the town to understand some of the assumptions that we're basing it on, because if they prove to be wrong, uh, the situation will greatly change. I'm very comfortable that assumptions for next year are solid, which is why I will vote in favor of the budget for next year. Projecting two and three years out is very hard to do. Um, for example, one of the major assumptions uh, that we did, well, let me first say, one of the major reasons why I think our budget's coming in at such a low figure is, and we can't name the figures yet, but the teachers were extremely um, cognizant of keeping our budget as low as possible. They negotiated an extremely reasonable deal that keeps them competitive with Yarmouth and Falmouth and Cumberland, but it was an excellent negotiation. So they made a lot of, uh, the figures they worked out, I can only, I guess I would call them extremely reasonable 
in light of the increase they've gotten in previous years to get them caught up with Yarmouth. So I think the major driving factor was a very good deal with the teachers if we finally sign it, but I, I think they deserve a lot of the credit here. And then second, we are drop, drawing down on our savings, I call them that, o over the next two years. Um, it assumes also that we will be reimbursing the state at the same level we are next year for the next three years. And that's a, an assumption that's open to debate because the last two years we've actually got a bump up in our monies from the state of Maine, which is almost unheard of in the last ten years for our school system. I personally do not believe that's going to continue. There's a lot of talk in Augusta about changing the EPS, for those who don't know what that is, that's basically the formula by which the state reimburses the town. They're going to change it. Uh, and that very, very well may happen. Right now, it works out to our benefit because it's based on property values, and our property values, regrettably, are not in increasing as fast as, percentage-wise, as northern Maine or some other towns. They're talking about changing it to focus more on income. And I can assure you on an income basis, we will, our, our return from the state, percentage-wise, will go down dramatically. So we, we have to keep an eye on that. We're also plugging in numbers for Medicaid due to, again, some great collections uh, by our IS department, but they are really tightening up Medicaid and the reimbursement rates for that, and the figure we're using is the figure we have, we're going to get this year, but that may or may not hold. It's not a large enough figure that it makes me doubt next year at all, and was it a large enough figure that, that gives me significant concerns for um, our, our overall, what we're doing next year. But... Um, I want people to know that we were very prudent in doing this. We made a three-year projection to make sure we could do it. I'm very comfortable about next year. But people in this town should realize that a lot of things can happen in the next three years. And 1.9 is unbelievably low, given, given the factors, net to taxes, given the factors that are out there. That if there's any significant changes in state revenue, any significant changes in Medicaid, any other significant changes in costs for the schools, it will be looking for the only other revenue source we have, which is town taxes. But I'm voting in favor of this year because I think our three-year budget projections were, were very reasonable in light of what you can do in three years. Um, but they are subject to several guesses on key elements, some of which could vary dramatically. So I want people to realize that 1.9 this year is an extremely low number for the town. But we are maintaining an excellent school system. We were lucky to be able to do it this year because of our savings. Our savings will be dramatically drawn down in the next couple of years. And, uh, but I think it's fair for the town to know uh, we did balance both the school and the tax burden on the town. We came down the side of maintaining the school system and keeping the tax rate low by using our savings. In the future, that could be a very different story, and I think people should be aware of that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, no, that's all right. I I would just say that um, thank you, David, for explaining and Ken for explaining um, the big picture. What I've uh, realized, if I write my thank you list to everyone for the budget and the work that what I've learned over the years, it would be, um, it's really, I think this work has been like a one, t in the one town concept. You've got, you know, community service, uh, town council, all the administrators, the teachers, um, the parents and the volunteering that they've done, uh, the alternative energy, uh, the recycling committee, Eco Maine, we really have worked hard together to bring in a, um, hopefully a low enough budget that our um, townspeople can live with and still keep the schools um, functioning um, at a very high quality. And so I just want to appreciate, it, appreciate all the work and I'm proud of all the work that um, everyone has done and the students for working so hard to make